Welcome back everyone. Today's video will explore a common theory about the identity of Supreme Leader Snoke. This theory has been circulating for some time, even prior to the release of The Force Awakens, and suggests that Supreme Leader Snoke is Darth Plagueis. Darth Plagueis was a Sith Lord and the master of Emperor Palpatine. After learning everything from his master, Emperor Palpatine, aka Darth Sidious, supposedly killed Plagueis whilst he was sleeping. For those who have been following this theory for a while, you likely have already seen many of the following pieces of evidence. However, today I thought I would collate all the arguments for and all the arguments against this theory into one video. The topics will include similarities in appearance, overall plotline discussion, a specific dialogue line from The Force Awakens, and musical evidence. Feel free to skip ahead to any section with the times indicated on screen. With the new movie finally released, I hope this may help you come to a conclusion about the identity of Supreme Leader Snoke. If you want to see the sources of information that are used to create this video, which include Reddit posts and articles, there will be a listing in the description section. Lastly, it goes without saying that this video will contain spoilers. If you have not already seen the movie, then I suggest you leave now. Let's begin with the topic of appearance. I'll provide the evidence for and then the evidence against. In an interview with People magazine, Neil Scallon, special effect artist for Creatures and Droids on The Force Awakens, said the following about Supreme Leader Snoke. This character is much better executed as a CGI character. That's just a practical reality when he's seven foot something tall. He's very, very thin. This led many people to believe that Snoke is of the moon race. I believe that is how it's pronounced. The moon race are thin, tall, humanoid species known throughout the galaxy for their expert financial and mathematical skills, so much so that their home planet housed the headquarters for the intergalactic banking clan. Interestingly, the Empire exempted the moons from non-human persecution to utilise their banking skills to achieve economic stability. So why does this matter? Well, if Snoke is a moon, this would add growing evidence to the theory that Snoke is Darth Plagueis as Darth Plagueis is of the same species. In addition, the limited scenes that we are shown of the holographic Snoke can be thought of as quite similar in appearance to the book cover of Star Wars Darth Plagueis. Furthermore, a Spanish language magazine released a small biography of Snoke as part of a feature, including an illustration. The illustration is almost a mirror image of another picture of Darth Plagueis. The feature in the magazine was then covered by the news entertainment site Collider. Collider made a video that referenced the said article and then this happened. Disney requested that the video be edited and such information removed. Here is a Facebook post by John Campier, senior producer for the Collider Movie Talk segment that featured the video. Hey guys, some of you may notice that the title and thumbnail for today's movie talk has been changed. Pretty soon, the video itself will be edited down as well as to remove the first topic discussed. It was a Star Wars topic. I just wanted to get on here before any speculation started as to why this is happening. A few hours after the show posted, Disney contacted me and very respectfully requested that we take the segment out. Please understand, Disney has never, in almost 10 years that I've dealt with them, ever requested that I take anything down nor have I ever put them in a position where they would feel the need to ask. My team and Disney have always had a very good relationship. When I talk mad shit about Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D., they have never asked me to tone it down or please say something nice. They have always respected our editorial integrity. So when they politely called me and requested we take a topic down today, I decided to grant the request. It wasn't an urgent story that fans had a right to know or anything important. I didn't feel that removing the topic was somehow a disservice to the fans or was in any way important to the community, so I felt okay about pulling it. It's important to know that the studios don't have any editorial influence over us, and Disney fully agrees with that. However, just because someone isn't your boss doesn't mean you can't do something for them if they make a request. Today, Disney made a respectful request, and out of respect, we obliged. So that's it. If you have any questions, feel free to ask. I'll answer what I can. Cheers. Lastly, on the topic of appearance, you may argue that the disfigurement to Snoke's face was a result from Darth Sidious's attempted assassination. 
So what is the counter argument to the similarities in appearance between Snoke and Plagueis? Well, firstly is the most obvious, while Snoke shares some similar features to that of a moon, his height and thin frame is not enough to justify the connection, and he also does not appear to share the most distinguishing feature, which is the elongated head of a moon. However, there is a counter-argument to the counter-argument, and that is that only Legends, which is no longer official Star Wars lore, refers to Darth Plagueis being a moon. The official description since the Disney takeover is that he is just a male Sith Lord. The second count argument would be to discredit the magazine biography that added so much fuel to this fire. Right now you'll be very hard done by to find any images of Supreme Leader Snoke. Hence you could argue that image is fake, or at least not official, as it would clearly reveal the identity of Supreme Leader Snoke, something that Disney is not prepared to share yet. The most obvious answer is that it was some ill-considered creative license in order to produce an illustration when presenting Snoke's biography in the magazine. In addition, to disprove the theory, we can use some other comments from Andy Serkis, the actor that performed the motion capture for Snoke. In an interview with Entertainment Weekly, Andy Serkis made this comment when asked about Snoke's damaged character and if Snoke's wounds came from the clash between the Rebellion and the Empire, seen in the original Star Wars trilogy. Andy says, No, he's a new character in this universe. It is very much a newly introduced character. He's aware of what's gone on in the respect that he has been around and is aware of prior events. I think it'd be fair to say that he's aware of the past to a great degree. Another source that at first appeared to support the Snoke Darth Plagueis theory may now be seen as evident against. Some early concept art depicts a character with a red lightsaber who is wearing a mask. Darth Plagueis was forced to wear a similar transpirator mask following a failed assassination attempt, hence the initial thought was that they were one in the same. However, now after seeing the movie, the transpirator is nowhere to be seen and this may now in fact disprove the theory. Let's move on to the second topic, how Darth Plagueis slots into the overall plotline. Once again, evidence for, followed by evidence against. Many would argue that Darth Plagueis' ability to manipulate midi-chlorians provides explanation to how he can still exist despite supposedly being killed by his apprentice, Emperor Palpatine, Darth Sidious. In Star Wars Episode 3, Revenge of the Sith, Palpatine is speaking to Anakin Skywalker. He says this, Darth Plagueis was a dark lord of the Sith, so powerful and so wise. He could use the Force to influence the midi-chlorians to create life. He had such a knowledge of the dark side, he could even keep the ones he cared about from dying. He became so powerful, the only thing he was afraid of was losing his power, which Eventually, of course, he did. Unfortunately, he taught his apprentice everything he knew. Then his apprentice killed him in his sleep. For those of you who don't know, the Sith have a philosophy known as the Rule of Two. And in the words of Yoda, always two there are, no more, no less, a master and an apprentice. So there is only ever a Dark Lord of the Sith and then the Apprentice, hence why they keep killing their masters. You could speculate that Darth Plagueis predicted Palpatine's portrayal, as expected, and preserved his own life through manipulation of the midichlorians, thus fooling Palpatine and seemingly adhering to the rule of two. Darth Plagueis being integral to the plotline would make a lot of sense if you consider the Star Wars Legends material even though it's no longer official. However, in Legends, Anakin Skywalker's Immaculate Conception was caused by Darth Plagueis. Anakin, later to become Darth Vader, and father to Luke and Leia Skywalker, Leia, later to have a child with Han Solo, that child being Kylo Ren, would therefore make Supreme Leader Snoke Kylo Ren's great-grandfather. This could provide justification to Kylo's obsession with Darth Vader. 
Darth Plagueis wants Kylo to be like the son he created, to be like Anakin Skywalker and transform into a powerful Sith. This would place Supreme Leader Snoke at the centre of the Star Wars saga, the catalyst and mastermind for all the events so far. This may be reinforced by an old interview with the Return of the Jedi director Richard Marquand, who has said to have discussed the entire nine episode saga with George Lucas. In the interview with Preview Magazine, Richard says, If you follow the direction and project into the final trilogy, you realise that you're going to meet the supreme intellect, and you think how is it possible to create a man who has such profound cunning that he can not only control Darth Vader, but the fate of Luke Skywalker, control the destiny of the whole galaxy? You'll be amazed. Has Disney created something similar to George Lucas's original plan? So what are the counter arguments to what would be a wonderful plot twist? One of the most commonly cited counter argument is a panel interview at the San Diego Comic Con. During the panel discussion, Lawrence Kasdan, writer for The Force Awakens, responds to a question about Darth Plagueis as if he is unaware of the character. However, later, J.J. Abrams, the director for The Force Awakens, says that he was joking, however addresses the fan theory with a specific no. But for those who want to get really technical, apparently the question was, would Plagueis or his lightsaber staff get a mention in the new movie? Not, is Plagueis Supreme Leader Snoke? Another similar counter-argument involves tweets from a Lucasfilm story group member, Pablo Hidalgo which seem quite suggestive, although not definitive, that Snoke and Plagueis are not the same. I think Larry Kasdan, not knowing who Plagueis was telling. He had such a knowledge of the dark side, he could even keep debunked fan theories from dying. Stares at Salt and Pepper Shakers, S and P, whispers, Snoke and Plagueis, drops coffee mug, shatters, reveals Kobayashi logo. Let's move on to the third piece of evidence, a specific line of dialogue from the movie, which in my opinion may be a clutch at loose ends. Firstly, the full title of Darth Plagueis is Darth Plagueis the Wise. I would need to watch the movie again, but apparently when Kylo Ren is speaking with Han Solo, he says, the Supreme Leader is wise, speculating that this is a subtle hint to Darth Plagueis the Wise. A counter-argument would simply be that this is not concrete enough to draw a conclusion, and from memory I believe Anakin Skywalker says something very similar about Palpatine in the prequels. The last piece of evidence is musical evidence. In Episode 3 Revenge of the Sith, Emperor Palpatine is telling the story of Darth Plagueis to Anakin Skywalker. The music in this scene is extremely similar to Supreme Leader Snoke's theme music from the Force Awakens soundtrack. No, I thought not. Not a story the Jedi would tell you. No. I thought not. It's not a story the Jedi would tell you. The link is in the description below. Does the similarity in music selection prove their connection or does it just mean that they were both Sith Lords? To finish off, this is my personal opinion. Making this video has pretty much just encouraged me to watch the movie again, which isn't a bad thing. And I thought that I would have come to a definitive decision about this theory after making this. However, I was wrong. I think I'm more conflicted than before. My gut feeling though is to go with the comment from Andy Serkis and JJ Abrams and trust that they are not trolling us or just trying to be tricky with their words. I think Supreme Leader Snoke is a new character, however they may have taken inspiration from non-canning material such as Darth Plagueis, however they are not one and the same. Make sure you let me know what you think in the comments below and provide any other evidence both for and against that I have missed. Once again it's a pleasure, this is Mylan Games. Peace.